All right. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome. I will uh, give everyone just a minute to come on in here. I will get my promo feedback. Yeah, welcome to you. Ah, oh, man. Yeah, I just got done with work. Chopping wood all day. The wood chopper. No, this is my comfortable shirt. This is my comfortable shirt. I uh I have to wear business clothes normally. But I'm good at blending in. <clears throat> well, I appreciate your husband <clears throat> for working at a sawmill in that really hard work. You know, I've been in the corporate America world for a long, 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 long time. I guess we'll have story time while we wait for Malia to get here and give everyone a chance to come on in. Um, I've been in white collar work for a long time. Well, you know, white collar work with activities. Um, but blue collar work never, ever gets the attention it deserves, in my opinion. I think the blue collar workers of America are way more important than white collar. I'm sure there's white collar jobs out there that are really, really important, but blue collar jobs like plumbers like uh uh sawmill woodworkers like uh machinists like uh mechanics like um the guys that build network towers and everything in between like those blue collar jobs just imagine what would happen if they just stopped one day literally just stopped can you imagine that the, the whole world would go into chaos. Gosh, I got a weird hair here. Let's go behind my ear. The world would go into chaos. Literally chaos. So I appreciate blue collar jobs a lot. And I, I try to go out of my way to let people that are in blue collar work know that. That their jobs are so important. Even the though they aren't like sexy jobs, you know, um, they, uh, they're the most important jobs really. And, and I believe that wholeheartedly. And I think more people are in blue collar work. Well, maybe not, maybe not, especially with all the technology jobs and everything we've gotten in the last 10 years. Maybe it's about equal now. I, I don't know. I haven't looked into that, but, um, but anyways, if you're a blue collar worker out there, I appreciate you. I appreciate you a lot. And I believe that you keep our country running. So, um, but welcome, welcome, welcome to the true crime talk show brought to you by Thought Riot Podcast. My name's Brendan, and I am one of your hosts. Gosh, I drank that too fast. And uh, Thought Riot Podcast can be found on every 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 podcast platform even ones that i personally am not subscribed to we can be found on those platforms i need to go through and claim all of those um but uh but uh anyways um you can find us on you can find us on Spotify. You can find us on uh, no, because there's a lot that goes into claiming with like submitting IDs, connecting 
a lot. It's just a lot of work. Um, but you can find us on Spotify under Thought Riot Podcast or Thought Riot, the True Crime and Criminal Culture Podcast. You can also find us under the True Crime Talk Show. And uh, you're on the True Crime Talk Show right now. You can tell by the sign that's behind us right here. Uh, you can find us on every social media platform there is on YouTube. YouTube, YouTube. You know, I don't say YouTube because that's where we stream the majority and have the conversation. I need to prioritize saying YouTube because the majority of our followers are international. That is, we get 10 times the amount of views internationally that we do nationally. Like for every thousand views, wait, it's even more than that. For every thousand views we get in the U.S., we get probably 50 times that internationally. So we are on YouTube. You can find us on YouTube forward slash Thought Riot Podcast or at for at Thought Riot Podcast. You can find us on every other social media platform forward slash Thought Riot Podcast except for Twitter. On Twitter, aka X, you, you can find us at forward slash Thought Riot Pod, P O D. And uh, welcome to the show. We just got done watching. A fraternity 4chan story, a continued deep dive and dig into the uh, fraternity lifestyle. And, and part of the reason we continue to dig into this is because so many people doubt this story without even digging into it within the Idaho 4 universe, within the Idaho 4 world, within the Idaho 4 massacre um, and the Brian Koberger case uh, without even looking. Like, people aren't even looking. They aren't looking at mm -hmm. the, po the possibility of connection with 4chan. They're just, oh, Brian Koberger's the guy. So anybody talking about the those Sigma Chi guys, that Greek life, that 4chan theory, frat boy theory, um, those are just a... A bunch of dumb drunk college kids right well based on the three or four different stories which we have now presented on it sure doesn't feel that way it sure doesn't feel that way to me um i, you know I don't what? know though you know with this story um <clears throat> gregory johnson jr i think this very well could be a story where a fraternity got away with murder um very well could be uh there's so many indicators of it and there's such like it's such a good cover-up like they did such if this is true okay if they genuinely murdered this man and covered it up the cover-up is extensive I mean, is it is it really? They couldn't get the FBI to do anything, and they yeah, got the FBI okay, to review okay. it. Okay, so I they want... actually got the FBI to yeah, review it, and yeah, the FBI no, did nothing. No, 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 no. You you got to be able to add everything in there. So this is what I was saying in the chat. Okay, I believe the parents went the wrong way. Now I'm not I'm not criticizing the parents, but I believe if the parents would not have went the route of uh of, of hyper focusing on the racial aspects of it that hey my son was ended my son was murdered because he's black i do not think they should have went down i don't that think that's road. what happened yeah that is what happened oh that that is what the parents were saying happened and i don't think that that is necessarily what happened because and the reason why i don't think that is because we've already covered three other cases that were white kids uh, before this case. So I think the fact that they focused on him being black made them not get this case turned over. I feel like at the time they were doing this, uh, I don't know, it, it may have been a feelings thing, feeling that way. You know, um, One thing that is really interesting to me is there's a website out there uh, and it's here. Let me get the name right. 
It's called Peace for Gregory Johnson Jr. Truth and Justice. This website specifically, specifically is for debunking anything to do with this actually being a murder um, and trying to prove that it was him harming himself. And it has like the autopsy. It. I'll pull it, up in a minute. it has the autopsy. It has tons of documentation and stuff. And one part of it that I thought was interesting was it shows the chapter demographics in 2008. And it shows a picture of the class photo. And it says the claim is Gregory Johnson Jr. was in an all white fraternity. And then below it, it says the response, it's false. Sigma Chi fraternity is a diverse fraternity, uh, yeah. you know, and it shows the demographics. Well, <laughs> he was the second black kid in the whole fraternity at that time. So he was not, one of not the whole fraternity one in of that, two in that class, in that uh, chapter, in, in that, that chapter, chapter he, he was, was the second one, one of two. Yeah. So so they're like, that's false. He wasn't the only black kid. He was the second black. Kid. Yeah, I got you. Which kind of cracks just, me. I want to be careful highlighting that because, and the reason w why I want to be careful highlighting like the the racial aspects of it is because I do think this deserves to be looked into. I do think there I are do some too. major <clears throat> questions here. And look, ob objectivity doesn't care at all about your color you can be any race it doesn't matter the objectivity of evidence it doesn't change anything if you get hit you're going to have the same type of injuries whether you're black whether you're white whether you're hispanic it doesn't matter all right when you look at the evidence of this case could that be the reason I don't know. Maybe. I mean, I feel like that's really far fetched. OK, the reason why I feel that way is because we've already covered three other cases and there was uh, other people of color in there and it, not just black, but there's Hispanic in there, Hispanics. And there there were they were more diverse than just, you know, <laughs> The way they the parents approach it make it feel like that Sigma Chi chapter is like Ku Klux Klan. You know what I mean? Right, and, and they're that, not. No, no, they were not. That is not what was going on there. No, um, I, I think what's interesting is he had an injury to the back of his head. Okay, something or someone hit the back of this kid's head hard enough to penetrate the skin and skull and. He was found hanging from. He wasn't found that way. That's what's really interesting. Here. Of course, so, yeah. I'm giving the story of the brothers. the The fraternity claim he was found hanging from a pole, a water pipe, or yeah, yeah, in yeah, the a basement. Water pipe. So, so what's really interesting here? I guess we'll give a quick rundown of the crime scene. Um, another weird thing for you people who love numerology. Um, this. Gregory jo Johnson Jr. died November 22nd of 2008, 11-22-08, which is really strange, <laughs> I will admit, 11-22, super weird. Anyway, so what happened? Um, supposedly, uh, fraternity, the fr a fraternity brother went downstairs and found him hanging from a water pipe. Um, by like some kind of extension cord, some very thick extension cord. Um, and they immediately took him down and put him in an office chair that was in the basement. So what she's telling you, though, that we don't have evidence this actually happened. This is what we we're don't. being told. Happened. This is what the fraternity mm -hmm. brothers claim happened, that mm -hmm. they took him down and put him in the office chair um, and then called 911. Mm -hmm. Now, as for the exact timeline, I'm going to have to dig into the exact timeline. I honestly think I could do another video on this, digging into the timeline, seeing if there's any inconsistencies, um, things like that. So they claim they, they pull him down and they call 911 um, and the cops get there and find him in this rolling office chair. Now, what's interesting in the autopsy, they claim all the lividity is on his backside. Liver mortis right. is on his backside. For someone found hanging who's cold to the touch, 
because they said he was cold to the touch. So he'd been there a while. And he had all this liver mortis was on his backside. That doesn't make sense. Now, he is very tall. And the basement was very short. So he should have been basically on his knees almost, um, which also doesn't make sense for hanging yourself. Uh, mm. It doesn't make a ton of sense. Now, could you do it that way? Sure, you could. Yeah. It's possible. It's a now, different hanging another, than what you see in the movies. It's more like suffocation. It's not suffocation. It is... Uh, so... Uh, there is oh strangulation, uh, I guess, but not yeah, breaking your neck. Like well, you're not dropping. Hold, your... Let me finish. So there is um, a sexual element to cutting off circulation, and a lot of people in the world uh, have have accidentally ended their lives doing that. And and part of how they do that is a very similar setup to what we're seeing here where uh you know you can touch you're putting weight here you're supposed to hold something i i don't want to give all the details but there's a way that when you pass out it releases okay well it doesn't work every time but what that proves is that it does enough to make you pass out you do not need to not be able to touch you just have to be able to be in a position that will cause unconsciousness and then it, it, the rope and uh, the length of time ends up doing the rest. So I, I don't think that that's objectively good evidence to add that there's something strange going on here that he can touch the ground. I still think that you can end yours yourself uh, very easily without not touching, even though in most movies we see people are standing on a chair, kick the chair. Uh, that's not so they can't touch. That is so once they start, they can't come back from it, even though there's much easier way to do it. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, the weird things, um, he didn't have intense marks from And just so you guys know, his family, his mother and father have made his autopsy, uh, not autopsy because they took these pictures actually after he was in the casket and prepared for a funeral. His family was not allowed to see him or identify the body for 13 days. They were not allowed to see their son, um, which is weird. You guys, that is not normal. When they got there and they asked to see him, they said, no, the fraternity brothers already identified him and we have his identification. You can't see him and made them wait two weeks to even be able to see their son. You realize and then at that time, allowed. no, that's, that's illegal. Yeah. And they're in California and California. It's illegal. So <laughs> then he's prepared for the funeral. They see him and he's in the casket and they see that he has marks on the back of his head. He has like a big gash and they said it was leaking brain matter. Um, and that, and that his neck was broken. Uh, I'm, I think they might've had a second look to be honest. I think they might've had a second look. I need to go back through all the yeah, stuff I, I found, but as far as we know, his his family found out that his neck was broken, that he had a big gash and uh, his skull was fractured on the back of his head and uh, he didn't have much marking around the neck. And these pictures that they took are online. They made them yeah. very public because they wanted everyone to see well this doesn't make sense this isn't adding up we'll post them in discord it's not something i'm willing to show on youtube i'll just you guys. post their facebook and their instagram on discord so that if you want to go look you can um they have them like i said very public on facebook and instagram uh, and I believe both names for those social medias are justice for Gregory Johnson. Um, but yeah, it's it's really, really strange, honestly, um, that he didn't have much marking on his neck. Um, so that but I don't know what's go. I don't understand that. I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Yeah, I do know what you mean. And some, like, somebody, somebody mentioned this in the chat, and I think it's really important that uh, someone said, you know, could it could it look like a a, a GS a W a gunshot wound? Yes, it absolutely could look like a small caliber GSW. 
um, with a 22 or 20 gauge, there's even smaller, um, a lot of times that is actually um, more deadly than a high caliber gun because what ends up happening is it has enough force to enter the skull. Um, maybe I should have told people like, warning but it has enough force to enter the skull but not exit the skull so what a 22 ends up doing is bouncing around the inside of a skull wreaking havoc to the head and the in the entrance wound will and could sometimes have flare back that looks like an exit wound you have to know what you're looking for I just what? and it causes no mess. Okay, that's interesting. Mm -hmm. um, you think that's, it that's could not look like, like common that? knowledge that you know a lot of people know, but absolutely, it can look like that. Absolutely, yep. Hmm, that is really interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't trust the original medical examiner's examiner's report whatsoever. Um when we post the links and this it's on this website you wanted to share the website right mm -hmm. you were going to show it yeah right now what yeah you can show it right now um the medical examiner's report which is on this website that brendan's going to share with you guys um it, it, it i just it, it doesn't feel thorough and he even mentions some he basically said there's like a nodule, like some kind of bump on his head, but then doesn't go into it at all. Like not at all. Nowhere does it say his neck is broken. Um, it just doesn't feel thorough. It feels like intentionally vague in a lot of ways. And again, the liver mortis just doesn't make sense to me. what no signs of strangulation this claim is confusing indeed there are no signs of strangulation i mean no exactly what listen i mean the autopsy part play. three neck dissection examination of the soft tissues of the neck including large vessels and strap muscles reveal no abnormalities uh a, com a complete layered neck dissection demonstrates no hemorrhage in the soft tissues or musculature of the neck. The hyoid bone and larynx are intact. There is substantial evidence of ligature hanging. That is the opposite of substantial evidence. Yeah, it's true. So it's, what it's, are it's you saying, talking about? It's saying the opposite. And what they're trying to do is confuse people that, uh, in my opinion, right, in my opinion, I shouldn't say that because I'm not them and I don't know them. But what this seems like to me an expert salesperson who is around wordplay uh, all the time um, is they are uh, trying to confuse people with large words and and make it seem like but in well, reality, it's, there's no abnormalities uh, there should be and hanging uh, the hyoid and larynx would not be intact okay. oh. they would not be intact okay. that's the bone that they look for um that you that we that we've talked about um who's the i'm drawing a blank right now adhd brain who owned the island uh, uh where he flew people out there what's his name jeffrey epstein yeah jeffrey epstein so in jeffrey epstein those two bones you cannot break yourself that's why a lot of people have a lot of questions that hey you know was this actually him ending himself <sighs> because this bone was broken so when we see something like this i they they could be or they should show damage that it might not be broken all the way through but it should show damage if someone's hanging for a long enough amount of time that they're cold there should be bruising there should be soft tissue damage um and this clearly says there's not um, yeah, no, there should definitely be bruising. There should be hemorrhaging. There should be issues with the soft tissues of the neck. Uh, however, I did look up if it is normal in a hanging like this for there to be damage to the hyoid bone. And it's only present 25% of the time from the studies that I saw. 
Um, hanging does not immediately mean the, it doesn't like mean the hyoid bone will be damaged. Yes, it, it means that there would be visible damage to it. Yes, there would. You're probably it looking only up, up whether it was broken or not. And that's it, not what they look for. They look for damage. Well, I don't know. The The study I said that is was basically it was only affected 25% of the time. I assumed yeah. broken, but I don't know. I yeah, just it's I'm sure it's broken, but it it you can almost every single time a doctor can do a neck dissection and they're able to tell whether it was self-inflicted or not, whether uh, there was a substantial drop before or not. Um, and a lot of times those can tell you. And that's part of the reason why, again, like I said, the Epstein stuff, that's not something you can do without a substantial drop. And his was broke, right? Now, when we're looking at this, what I would expect to see based off of the situation of, you know, hanging while feet on the ground is there would be damaging and or bruising to the soft tissues around it. I would not expect to see it 100 percent broke, but it could be depending on how heavy you are. I mean, it depends on a lot of different factors, how much muscle you have in your neck, uh, where the rope laid, how much pressure there was, how, how thick the rope is. Like there's a lot of factors that come into play, you know? Yeah. So I. I'm looking here at the police report, which also is on that website, you guys. Um, but yeah, I, I want to bring something up here in a minute. But I think you're probably right. That was my immediate instinct is that it should be affected. Like there should be some kind of damage to the hyoid bone. And I know like even in what's the Gilgo Beach girl, um, the first one that in initiated all the, uh, the Shannon hyoid Gilbert. or larynx. So right, the, the larynx Shannon Gilbert. is like almost always has... Uh, tissue damage right so her hyoid bone shannon gilbert was a big deal because that shows she wasn't she didn't actually fall and and die by falling like she was strangled uh and that's how they proved it was the hyoid bone um because you you don't just fall and break your hyoid bone you know what i mean yeah, yeah. and and take off your own clothes like it, it just doesn't work like that so in that instance it is like a big deal however in this situation I think it's a little bit harder to know if it's a big deal or not. Um, just because regardless of whether or not that study meant, you know, completely broken hyoid bone or not in hanging cases, it the statistic was still smaller than I thought it would be. Like, I thought it would be most of the time there was damage to it, and instead it was 25% of the time. So I, well, I feel I, like that's... I would clarify, so you're not continuing to say that, because I am telling you, there is damage 100% of the time. You're talking about a break, not damage. I can almost guarantee, I would triple check that, so we're not continuing to say the wrong thing. Um. Because there's soft tissues around that that damage the larynx. Where it becomes an issue is either a high drop uh, or it's used to prove that somebody else was involved. I mean, I don't want to sit here and say the wrong thing over and over, do you? Huh? So, I don't know. Hold on. I thought that I created a playlist. Oh, we did. Okay. So okay, a fracture great. isn't necessarily considered a full break, is it? No. Every break is a fracture, but not every fracture is a break. So 20 male cases of self-harm um, hanging were reviewed. Fractures of the hyoid bone and or thyroid cartilage were found right. in five cases, 25%. Right. Two cases of the hyoid bone fracture, two cases of thyroid cartilage fracture, and one case was both bone fractures. Yeah. Yeah. So, so so that doesn't mean a complete break. And they're off they're also um including all forms like the thyroid cult uh, the thyroid cartilage yep. um and mm. the hyoid bone are both included in that. Yeah. So they're yep. not talking about a complete break. Right. 
no 25 percent of the time yeah a fracture is a break so a fracture is not something that you can do yourself so every break is a fracture but not every fracture is a complete break but uh, what they're saying there is that the damage around it, that's what I'm talking about. There's additional damage there that doesn't specifically have to do with the breaking of that. Yeah, and it only happened in 25% of cases. No, that's the fracture. That is the no, fracture. Two, five out of 20 people, there were five cases where it was affected, the hyoid bone and thyroid cartilage. Two cases of those of that five was a hyoid bone fracture. Two cases was a thyroid cartilage fracture. In mm -hmm. one case of both being fractured. Yeah. Five out of 20 cases. Yeah. And there we, we can go with that, but that's specifically talking about bone. So watch. Yeah, I know. We're talking about the hyoid bone, not soft tissue what that's the opposite of what i've been saying but we can move on so we don't get hung up on this that's okay some I have claimed lately i will just agree to disagree all, and we'll all look I'm into trying, it all i'm trying to say is that considering because there's even some claims that in 68 percent of cases um the hyoid bone is fractured mm -hmm. so i mean it it seems like it can vary. 68% is the highest statistic I have found. I'm just saying it doesn't necessarily indicate foul play or not. No, it has nothing to do with foul play. That's not the point that, that we're trying to make here. On that report, it says that there's absolutely no damage around anything having to do with that area. And what I'm saying is there is always damage, that a fracture is not every time, but they cited that there was no fracture. Okay, well, I wouldn't expect there to be a fracture because you'd either have to have A, a drop, or B, another person involved. But I would expect to see soft tissue damage and or cartilage damage around uh, that area, depending oh, on yeah, how I thick agree. the rope is and everything like that. It is not only damage 25% of the time. If you pass by hanging, there is damage 100% of the time, 100% right. of the time. So the fact that that statement is claiming that there is no damage is absurd yeah it makes no sense yeah. I, I agree with everything you just said yes okay we got we're done with that okay now one thing i wanted to point out from the medical or not the medical it's the police report so here i have the 911 call was at 6 50 16 50. so what time is that i'm not good with military time do you know what time that is what 16 50 4 50. okay so that's 4 50 p.m they call 911 and then the police get there 10 minutes later at five well um apparently and this is the circumstances okay this is what they list the this 20 year old descendant lived in in at sigma chi a fraternity house associated with san jose state university in california on 11 2008 at around 14 45. Mm -hmm. 1445 hours a fraternity brother went down into the basement and found the descendant hanging from a cord asphyxiated to a ceiling water pipe he took the descendant down and called for paramedics who pronounced the death upon arrival the descendant spoke with friends earlier in the day about problems he had with his father but had no other known medical or psychological issues he was not under the care of a physician and was not taking any medications. A note of intent was not found. Interesting that the fraternity says that this all happened, that they found him at 1445. What time is that? That's 245. Mm -hmm. And they did not call until two hours later. Yeah. He claims he found Gregory at 245 and did not call till 450 yeah are you kidding me yeah it's I, do, I just don't know i i can't understand that i mean it sounds like 
eight here we hours, go. Right here we go. Eight hours. Right. What were they doing? What was going I mean, on? We know what they were doing. They were trying it, to get their story straight. No, that is not what they were doing. They were doing what every fraternity and sorority has to do. They do not ever call police. This has been a conversation forever yeah. and ever and ever on this channel. Sororities and fraternities do not call police. They call their fraternity leaders. They are not allowed to reach out to police. Those two hours was them trying to reach out to their fraternity leaders. They were trying to reach out to, hang on. You, I can tell you exactly who. You know what's really interesting to me is we actually had this confirmed by another creator recently who you would not expect to confirm this information. And that is none other than Gray Hughes. He, in a video about the Riley... Uh, um, what strain case, which is the missing person out of Nashville, talked about him being in a fraternity when he was in college and how he would never want his child to be in one. And that one of his friends, unfortunately, and very sad, you know, sadly, tragically passed away after doing coke one night because um, he had an abnormal heart rhythm and the coke sent him into like one that was deadly. And, um, they had to get their story straight. They couldn't just call 911 and like, you know, go th about things like normal people. And it really there turned him off Gosh. to fr fraternities. Like he had a hard time with it after that um, because clearly he has a conscience. Okay. So, which was um, interesting to me that that was confirmed by him of all people um, that they can't just call 911 and be normal people and like tell the truth. They are more worried about the fraternity and um you know their own fun and the organization than they are even human life so um yes uh so the risk management foundation this is owned by sigma chi this is their uh risk management group that they have to reach out to the second something goes wrong um this is not a maybe you guys a lot of people leave a lot of comments saying that this isn't true i there's no opinion here with this. Fraternities and sororities do not call 911. They just don't. It is in their rules in order to join the fraternity or sorority. They do not call 911 first ever. Ever, never, never, so what, ever. They call a lawyer first? No, they call their, there is a chain of command and their number one call is to the president and or house leader that call should be to the leading um i had i have this on our 18 whatever video uh to the uh what whoever that next person is and ultimately that person has the number for the contact at this risk management foundation the and that risk management foundation gets their ducks in a row finds out what needs to happen and then goes from there it's really a strange situation that doesn't help the general public and doesn't help situations like this. So the Sigma Chi here, let me see if I can make this bigger for you guys. Oh, yeah. All right. The Sigma Chi Risk Management Foundation was founded in 1988 by acclamation of 55th Grand Consul Tom Bell, Mississippi State, 1935. Its mission is to educate members on risk management, to <laughs> foster a fraternal culture of safety and responsibility, and to provide oh. our chapters with access to affordable comprehensive insurance coverage. RMF utilizes pooled resources, prudent management, expert industry experience, and active undergraduate member input to ensure, enable, and elevate the Sigma Chi experience by providing our members with practical risk education, access to a group insurance coverage program, initiative initiatives to improve student housing, and opportunities for professional and personal development. Today, RMF covers more than 15,000 brothers and $250 million in Sigma Chi property. It remains the only program of its kind in Greek letter world. Oh, gosh. So hmm. Sigma Chi is like 
on one, you know, like, well, Sigma Chi is the number one fraternity and there's no questions about that. They have the most chapters. They have the most students. They have the most coverage. They have the most annual income. Um, and in my opinion, all this insurance safety and coverage, I'm not going to show that video because then they will, uh, then they can have access to put a copyright. So if you want to check it out, check it out at sigmachi.org, you guys. But um, so pair all of that insurance, $250 million of Sigma Chi property. And I've heard that's way, that's, <laughs> that is much less than it actually is. The, an, the, the multi-million dollar annual income they receive from membership dues and everything else you pair all that with a group of college kids that don't call 911, don't reach out to law enforcement when things go wrong, and you get a situation that we're dealing with right here. I think this is problematic. I think there are issues here. I think that when this happened, something happened uh, accidentally. I mean, let's be real here. They let him in to the fraternity. I don't think there could ever be a situation where this fraternity in any chapter, like, do you understand how many guys there has to be bought into this? You guys that, and that's at random. Okay. These aren't guys seeking some weird cult behavior, but this idea that like, it's about racial motives where you have this large group of men who, what let this boy in because he's, black to then just take advantage of him when they said oh we're ready to go you know let's let's do that that didn't happen that's not how it happened what i'm thinking in my opinion is that maybe they were wrestling maybe they were doing fraternity stuff maybe one of them made the other mad maybe something where tensions ran high they were drinking he had alcohol in his system we don't know when the the tod is the time of death somebody Not overreacted really, no. somebody did something that caused him his life i think these guys went into oh shoot mode get everyone well, in the house we need to call rmf we need help we need to get our story straight and then the story began right two hours goes by and then law enforcement is called and that's where the story picks up that you were talking about right so i i already assumed there was going to be a delay in calling 911 i figured that because of what we talked about in the past and it's of course it's multiple hours um where they find fraternity brother hanging and wait hours to call like that's so messed up um the responding officer was sergeant m santos who is a university police officer and what's also really interesting is this is one of the only other cases i've ever seen ever where a university is involved in the investigation like the idaho four sigma chi is the most powerful fraternity right now mm -hmm. let me remind you guys we've showed this on multiple of our videos and that's why i shared this right here if you guys have not watched these videos you will understand the evidence that is backing this idea and or possibility please understand i am not saying these people had anything to do with anything we are simply asking the questions and sharing the evidence and connecting dots, hoping you guys make your decision, right? Uh, well, within these stories, we go over the annual statistics on the Greek life, okay? When somebody goes through college and graduates, 75% of the college money that is given to them that they need in order to support themselves and continue functioning is given from Greek members. Sororities, fraternities give 75% of the money to colleges for them to continue running. All other students, which are the majority, by the way, which are the majority, only give 25% of that total. 
Yeah. So you have like 25% of the student bot. And I'm, that's way too high of a percentage, but I'm just giving an example. Let's just say 10% of the student body is part of the Greek fraternity life. Maybe it's 20, maybe it's less. I don't know. The other 80% is regular students not involved in the Greek life. Well, you take that 80%. They only give 25% of the annual college money gifted to, to keep the college functioning, while that 10 or 20% gives 75% of their annual money gifted. It's insane. Now That's why they let fraternities get away with so much. That's why they're still in colleges and they're never going away I mean, unless I, I, we figure out a different system because yeah. they are vital. To keeping the school running. They the, are now such a part of universities that if they got rid of them, they would be screwed financially. So when COVID hit, you guys, and uh, registration fell through the floor, the only reason so many universities are still standing right now this very second is because of fraternities and sororities is because of the Greek life. They literally kept the university and or college system afloat. So who has the power here? Right. Is it the one that gives face or is it the one with the money? I mean, you decide. So um, another interesting thing is that, you know, Gregory shared a room with two other of his fraternity brothers. Um, they say it's kind of like a homemade loft. Uh, it kind of reminds me of what we've seen of the inside of the Sigma Chi house in um, in Idaho, where they have kind of bunk beds that look like they're like kind of hand built lofts, like you know somebody actually built them. Um, well, he, apparently there was a brand new mattress when his family got there, um, which is weird. Like it was like a, they said it was like a mattress that had never been slept on before. Uh, like they had thrown Gregory's away and gotten a new one. And on top of that, um, the police didn't confiscate Gregory's phone. Uh, and when I wasn't, wasn't it a sister or something? Um, it was, I think, a sister in law, maybe. Uh, was at the fraternity house. She noticed Gregory's phone and asked one of the fraternity brothers, like, is that Gregory's phone? And they were like, oh, oh, yeah, and let her have it, um, which is interesting. Yeah. I like, why didn't the why didn't the cops take the phone? Like, they believe things were deleted on it, that the fraternity deleted things on it. I see a few people talking about ads. Uh, just a quick update. Number one, hit that like button, you guys. We are super happy that you're all here. You guys are the heart of Thought Riot Podcast and the True Crime Talk Show. And everything we do, we do for you. We we look at the viewer as our leadership and or boss, all right? Um, so we make the shows for you. Please hit that like button. It does so much more than I can ever explain. Hit that uh, comment under the video as soon as it's done. Please hit that like button and comment for uh, the video that we just got done premiering. It does so, so, so much. Uh, it, it floats videos or syncs them, honestly. I just posted that link if you didn't leave a comment or like on the premiere. So please do if you get a second. Um, so with ads, you guys, I am very transparent how we do our ads here. Uh, because we see you guys as the owners. This is a podcast that is about financially supporting itself once we get to that point. We aren't at a point where we're even worried about that, and we've got a long way to go. For <laughs> we got to be making 20 times the amount of money before we're anywhere near what uh, we bring in personally uh, to be able to support. But anyways... Um, Ads on the lives are every 20 minutes, one every 20 minutes. If you go away from the show and come back, 
then your ad timer could show up again. Now, when you click on the video, it doesn't wait 20 minutes and then show you an ad. It tries to put it in there at the best time. So you could be on here for five minutes and get an ad. Then it'll wait 20 minutes and give you another ad. If you're, like I said, if you're going away from the video and coming back, then you could get more ads. So um, just be aware of that. On live streams, one ad every 20 minutes after the first one. On premieres and regular videos, an ad between five and 10 minutes or get that premium YouTube premium, baby that, you know, premium is how YouTube is able to tell and memberships. Um, if somebody is a bot, a troll trying to manipulate uh, viewer watch times, views, things like that. So in my opinion, if YouTube is your primary source of news, entertainment, uh, you know, audio video consumption, I would suggest getting YouTube premium. You guys, uh, Google is a pretty good company. They try really hard to be a good company. Every company has flaws and there are problems in every company. So I think Google does mean well. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I, I just think that, uh, that you know, it'll help the, the viewing experience, but anyways, back to the show you know what's also really interesting when we're looking at the timeline you guys um of of when this happened so as i told you th this police report says that the fraternity brothers called at or no that they found him at 2 45 okay 2 45 p.m they find him that's what they mm -hmm. claim and they wait two hours to call police mm -hmm. well this officer who is not a uh university officer he arrived 10 minutes after the university officer um which is what's his name it should be signed right there's no oh no there's no signature this what? body was searched in the presence of sergeant santos what? and officer van van der Noek. that might be him what uh, i'll tell you after okay just take a screenshot or something so that, okay anyway it's so, already recorded so but anyways go ahead yep so okay they called so that's two hours that the fraternity brothers claim have gone by right mm. well this officer says rigor mortis had not yet set in oh yeah we need to talk about that that is a that is huge evidence dude they claim it was a two hour time gap yeah. but rigor mortis has it hasn't set in yet and the officers are there at the two hour mark mm. So that means rigor mortis should begin at this point that they're there. Well, I if that means he died exactly two hours ago when they claimed they were finding him. Yeah. Or even after. It could have been I mean it could have been after, but he was cool to the touch. So what does this mean? Okay. They claim they found him two hours ago. Police are there supposedly two hours after the fraternity brothers find him. But he's cool to the touch, and rigor mortis has not set in. What does this mean? I'm, I'm not 100% sure. sure. I'm pretty I'm, sure rigor mortis sets in after 45 minutes, right? Doesn't it start? No, I think it starts two hours in. Okay, yeah. So rigor mortis appears approximately two hours after the death uh in the muscles of the face progresses to the limbs over the next few hours completing between six to eight hours right rigor mortis then stays for another 12 um and then it starts disappearing after yeah. 24 hours well no it till 24 hours so 12 so a after 24 hours then it's, it's gone yeah i believe it it's gone so it is this a situation where um it's uh he had been passed for 24 hours. I mean, we don't know because of how strange the situation was. Well, managed. he's cold. So it could either be, and we don't know exactly how all right. of this but, is. So it could be over 24 hours or it could be less than two hours. Right. I just want to be clear, though, that if we're questioning, we can't pick and choose what evidence fits a narrative and what doesn't. Right. So we see a situation where the information we're getting from the fraternity and the police uh, doesn't feel like it's completely authentic. That means all of the evidence that they're giving us 
doesn't feel completely authentic. So we don't know if he was cold right. to the touch. We don't know if he was warm. We don't know if rigor mortis or um, uh, liver mortis is what it is. I mean, what's interesting is during his autopsy, we uh, get to see a little bit more around the liver mortis and the fact that it was on his backside. That's impossible hanging impossible you guys when your heart stops pumping your blood gets pulled by gravity wherever you're laying so if you're standing up somehow like in this situation his body would have been semi vertical it should pull in your legs and your lower half of the body and hands probably yep yeah now in on his body the liver mortis was on his back Okay, so can I let's talk about this for a minute. So this says, okay, in this police report that fraternity brother found him bad. hanging from an electrical cord affixed to the water pipe. The fraternity brother unwound that mean that. unwound the cord and placed the descendant in an office chair that was nearby. A standard orange electrical cord was on the floor nearby the body. Two round loops tied in the knot are in the back, uh, are in the middle of the cord. I place surgical tape around the knot to uh, maintain the integrity of the loops for the pathologist review. Um, officers measured approximately 70 inches from the floor to the bottom of the water pipe, and he was 6'2". How tall is 70 inches? Wait. So, so it's 70 inches from the bottom of the water pipe to the floor. In an office chair that was nearby. In an office the chair. Electrical cord was on the floor near the body. Two round loops tightened. In the middle of the cord. Cord. Two round loops. Seventy inches is five what, ten. What and I'm he not was under, six What two. I'm not understanding is why the officer would place surgical tape around the loops to hold the integrity when he already said that the loops were undone by the brothers. So if they were undone, how would he know where the loops were to uh, to keep the integrity of the cord? They unwound the cord and placed him in the office chair. Is this on this side? There could so still be, show? there still could be, where, yeah, it's where? on there. So press autopsy report, medical examiner. There's no pictures, so we don't have to worry about that. Go down. Yeah, you can share it. So this is what we're looking at, guys, right here, right there. Yeah, so this is my big question here. Okay, so a fraternity but brother found him hanging from an electric cord asphyxiated around a water pipe at the top of the ceiling. The fraternity brothers unwound the cord and placed him in an office chair that was nearby. A standard orange electric cord was on the floor near the body. Two round loops tied with a knot are in the middle of the cord. I place surgical tape around the knot to maintain the integrity of the loops. For That doesn't make sense to me. So he's hanging. The brothers go down there. They untie it, right? They untie it and take it off of him. Then the cop comes two hours later and puts tape where he just believes the cord was tied because it's been untied. I mean, I think that a knot could stay in it if it's tr a traditional noose. You just loosen it. That's not what was said. That's not what's said. But there is a, I, I mean, if it's some kind of slip knot or something, but it could ma it, be maintained. It says pretty clear here. I mean, this is a legal document, okay? These details matter. You can't be matter. all loosey-goosey on, on one thing and then not on the other. I agree. So now, the cop got there and retied the cord and placed electrical tape on it, even though there was well, no knot when he got there. Like, do you guys understand what I'm saying here that the cop came and essentially guessed where this was because the brothers already undid it. So was there, was there even a cord to me? 
what they're looking at as evidence is the cop creating a loop. I, I don't know if you massive. can jump that far. What um, are you talking about? It says it. It literally it doesn't says say that I tied two loops. Yes. I placed surgical tape around the knot to maintain the integrity of the loops. The sentence right before that says the brothers untied the cord. I know it doesn't make so sense. So it says that. It doesn't say he tied knots. Dude, but. what do you call that? I I get that so, it doesn't make sense, but that's, a, I think, a jump to say that he tied them. What? So who do you think tied it? What are you talking about? I think he it's possible to, he... to get a cord off somebody's neck and there still be knots in it. It's a double knot. Do you understand? Maybe that's why you're not understanding it, because you're not understanding how they tied it. No, I have no so idea how a, they tied it. It's a double knot. The only way you're going to get two wrapped cords like that is if you fold the rope on itself and tie it through. So what you're thinking as a slip is not how that was tied. That is not what's going on there. Okay. There's two loops. Two. In my opinion, I don't think that's a stretch at all. I think that's the obvious thing. To assume that isn't what's going on here, I think, feels illogical. Do you have a cord you could tie like that? No. No? Mm -mm. Okay. No, that's so bad for cords. And all these cords are super expensive. So, no. What about an old mm -mm. charger? No? <laughs> no. <Nope>. Okay. <laughs> okay, so... um. Okay, well, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it says but, it very clear here that the cop, to uphold the in integrity of the cord, created the loop and put tape there. Why else would you put tape? Like, help me understand. Well, he says two round loops tied with a knot are in the middle of the cord. Yeah. I place surgical tape around the knot to maintain the integrity of the loops for the pathologist review. So why would you put tape there? In case there's any um, fibers, hair, no. uh, anything to maintain no. it for testing. No. You're thinking like tape is there to cover like any evidence? No, that would be a bag. They would put it in a bag. This is electrical tape. Thin tape. It's because there weren't cords in there. It, it's because there wasn't a loop. Why else would you put electrical tape on it? I, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Ex my point. I Literally, I it, it's super, super obvious in my opinion. So the cop created... So there were loops in the cable, okay, is what's going on here. The cop got there wanted there to be evidence of the loops how the sigma chi says there was because there wasn't any loops there wasn't any he put them in the loop fashion and put tape there to protect the integrity of where that loop was found otherwise like help me understand why it would say that they untied the cord help me understand why it said that to protect the integrity of the loop he put tape there. Otherwise, there's no need for tape. There's no need for any of that. In my opinion, the wording's very interesting. So, hmm. well, he put surgical tape, not electrical tape. But, um, what's also interesting is, um, he said lividity was consistent. With his found position and is easily blanched when pressed. Rigor mortis had not yet developed in the extremities. So what I find odd is that he says lividity is consistent in his found position. Okay, found as in in the chair? Because if it's yeah. consistent with him being found in the chair... That doesn't make sense if he was hanging when they found him. Right. Yeah. Like it, it there if if he was indeed moved, okay, after death, 
they should be able to tell that through the liver mortis. And there is no indication in the autopsy report that he was moved. The liver mortis does not indicate that according to this medical examiner, which is exactly why I say he wasn't very thorough. Unless there was, because he should be indicating that. Okay, he was hanging. He was moved to a seated position. So we know that this was, that's what they claim. The evidence is showing that. They should be trying to prove that with the liver mortis, or there should be proof of that with the liver mortis, not trying to prove it, but there should be that proof there. And he never says it in the autopsy report. He just says that it's on his posterior side, his backside. Now, is that lower back? I don't know. It doesn't make a ton of sense. But it makes you wonder, was he... Did he die in the chair? Did somebody hit him in the head in that chair? Did somebody tie him? Like, what happened to him down there, you know? But they did say that his hands were not... There was no damage to his hands, so... I mean, you would expect to see... Levit the liver mortis in his hands you would expect to see it in his lower extremities you would expect to see it in his thighs because his knees were bent you would expect to see it on his buttocks area um you would expect to see it all in those areas and and you don't based off what we're seeing here you don't to me that feels like a problem in my opinion What's nitrous oxide? Nice. That's a so yeah, what about it? Okay, so this medical report, um, which is a page down, claims that he went to like an ER um because he had heart palpitations and pressure in his chest. The report documents the descendant used caffeine and nitrous oxide four days prior to coming into the ER. Yeah. I mean, it's just a drug. Okay. He had four or five Red Bull energy drinks. He was released home with an inhaler because he had asthma. Yeah, there, there's uh, some some gnarly things can happen when you're a uh, a NOS user, nitrous oxide um, user. I believe that if you do it enough, uh, it something happens where it can get in your blood, something like that. I I don't remember you guys, so I'm probably saying the wrong thing right now. So I I apologize, but there's there's something that can happen. Maybe it's the air bubbles are, are in your lungs and causes something. I don't know, but what? there's reasons why that can be scary and why it can cause some kind of heart palpitations. Um, I had a friend who, who be, who was hospitalized when I was way younger at like 14, 15 years old, but he was hospitalized, uh, because of that from NAS. Hmm. And shout out to as one divided we fall uh, member for two months. We appreciate you. You are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. And we're super stoked to have you here. I always love your comments, really. Like the comments you leave under videos are incredible. Um, I always leave walking away like, hmm, man, that that's going to keep me thinking for a while. But we appreciate you. You are awesome awesome and uh but that's interesting that he went to the doctors because of it he was feeling something from it i don't know how energy drinks pair with uh nas but you know i i don't know i don't know i think the big issue is the liver mortis here i really do i think it's and the and the crack on the back of the head liver and mortis, the fact that that's not really mentioned in the me original medical examiner's report like that's not something you can just overlook liver mortis the crack on the back of the head and uh the uh lack of anything around the neck considering the, that's the way he was supposedly died the involvement of the officer who just so happened to be a university officer and this university was heavily involved in this case and remember the 75 percent of income from gifted money right um comes from 
fraternities and Sigma Chi is the biggest. So there's a lot of reasons from a lot of different people why it would be beneficial to help Sigma Chi. This situation right here with Sigma Chi is where this whole, you only have one more chance, otherwise we're shutting you down nationally. This is the first thing that happened after they were told this. So they could not get in trouble. Otherwise, if they would have been at fault at all, even a partial little tiny 10% bit, Sigma Chi would have been shut down forever, nationally, forever, completely abolished within the USA. Um, so there's a lot of reasons here for them to stick to this story. What's interesting, why I was highlighting what I was highlighting earlier with the extension cord and the tape, it's because that officer is a university officer, you guys. They they understand where their pay comes from, okay? Their pay comes from the university. The university gets money from the fraternities and student signups. Um, so I, I think that it makes a lot of sense. And I don't think an officer would have been okay with any of this. I think that uh, an officer with a commitment to find out what was going on, not assuming that it was uh, ending themselves. They would have gotten everybody out of the house, locked the whole house down, and started investigating everything, every single room, checking everything. Uh, I, I mean, what's the importance of the rope? We know that the fraternity touched it. I, I go back to why was that even important at all? It clearly says there's going to be a bunch of fingerprints on there from the fraternity members. Okay. Whoever touched it, how they touched it, unwrapped it, got it off from around his neck. So like why that was important. I, I don't know. Just, I think just taking the cord period to the medical examiner would have been enough because they would have been able to measure the, the what's that ligature markings, like the thickness of the markings to find out if that, you know, adds up to what they're seeing in the soft tissues, in the bruising, in the cartilages of where you would expect to see bruising and everything. You know, I wish that there would have been a picture because when you when you pass from hanging certain things happen to your face i don't know if most people know that but we, certain things happen to your face we have some pictures it, it um, cuts off the the blood um and there's some swelling that happens that you can tell it, it's just strange it it's strange. We have some pictures from the family, but not much. Um, here's one thing I want to point out as an oddity, too. Now, remember, I told you guys that the family claims go they back. were not able to identify him, um, that they weren't allowed to see him till 13 days later. OK, now on this police report, it says right here that Gregory and Denise Johnson are the parents, OK, that they were notified by Clear Lake PD in person which denise johnson does say that they came in person to her home and she felt threatened by them the way they entered her home the way he, the officer stood there with his uh hand on his gun and um you know it, just the whole attitude clearly wasn't very it wasn't very nice it wasn't like I'm really sorry to tell you this, you know, but your son Dude, has passed so away. It, it's like a really weird situation, according to Denise Johnson, which is the mother. So this claims right here, right here, identified by Denise Johnson method, visual date and time, 11, 24, 2008, which is two days after he passed away. Well, this is directly contradicted down here not this it is right here and i know this is really hard to see you guys but this date right here says 11 26 okay this says date reported is 11 22 date today underneath that right here is 11 26 disposition of the body the, descend the descendant's family has been notified of the death. D the descendant has been tentatively, tenta blah, 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 tenta oh my gosh, tentatively 
identified by his California driver's license and by his fraternity brothers with whom he lived for two years. I did not take a fingerprint from the descendant because I bagged his hands. That is exactly what the mother says happened. Okay. She, and this is on 1026. This is two days after that other report claimed the mother identified him. Th that's when this is drafted, claiming that he was ID'd by the fraternity brothers and his own driver's license. So which is it? Did the mother identify him two days later? Or did the fraternity brothers identify him and his own driver's license? That's what the mother says. She says they didn't get to see him for 13 days and that they didn't even let them identify him. You see what I'm saying? This is a huge contradiction. And this report right here verifies what the mother said, that they didn't let her them see her son and that he was identified by the fraternity brothers. That's exactly what she said. You, you know, This just, I feel like, reeks. It reeks of a cover-up. Um, and this whole website piece for Gregory Johnson, here, I want to... Does Brennan still have it pulled up? Like, the full website? Hold on. Okay. This website right here. Read that, you guys. The real facts about Gregory Johnson Jr.'s death. If there is to be justice for Gregory, we ask that you look at the facts and the evidence. Friends of Gregory Johnson Jr. Now let's read the about page. Gregory Johnson Jr. was a student at San Jose State University and member of the Sigma Chi fraternity chapter at J SJSU when he tragically committed the S-word on November 22nd 2008. This website is designed to provide the facts and truth about the circumstances around his death. That's it. There's nothing. There's nothing. So who made this? Just friends of Gregory Johnson Jr.? Because his family and friends that have spoken out about this believe he was murdered. They don't believe that he did this to himself, that there were no indications. And all this does is defend the fraternity, you guys. That's all this website does, is defend the police, defend the coroner, and defend the fraternity. So who made this website? Because half the stuff they're claiming on here doesn't make any sense. Like, claiming that... Um, claiming that he... It, they have proof that he was hung but there's no damage to his neck. Like, you can't have zero damage to the neck and have proof that he was hung, that he did it to himself. Like, that is not possible. Not possible at all. His death was covered... Okay, so claim. His death was covered up and hidden from the public. Response, false. Junior's death was immediately reported upon discovery. Lie. And we have proof in the police report, you guys. In the police report, they attach. It was not immediately reported upon to the police. It took them two hours. The San Jose Fire Department responded and pronounced his death. The San Jose PD and San Jose State University police responded along with the Santa Clara County medical investigator. The autopsy report was uh, the autopsy report was and remains a public document, and it's a crappy one. It's an awful autopsy report. Uh, he was murdered. Claim he was reported. He was murdered by his fraternity brothers. F False. See autopsy report. This autopsy report is awful. Oh it's absolutely God. awful. So it doesn't prove anything. Uh, that it literally proves nothing. Who would even include that? He was murdered by his fraternity brothers. Do you think anyone would include that other than the family? Or the fraternity. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That I that's no, I know. Draw I your own conclusions, you guys. But who made that website? I mean, who just who has the buy-in to add that? Who in does there? it benefit? 
Yes. Just that sentence. Only that one. Yep. Interesting. Really, really interesting. Interesting stuff. Oh, super sticker coming through. All right. Uh, OCD Shaggy coming in with the super sticker. We appreciate you. Yes. Thank you so much. Yes. Awesome. High five. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. So we have some San Jose natives in the in the chat. I've been there quite a few times, actually. Yeah. I went partying there a lot. Um, okay, so and, and there was Barbara there were protests. There were the picture, okay, the thumbnail of this, you see a banner. Um, and this banner shows uh abolish Sigma Chi justice for Gregory. There were several protests, but this was back, you know, yeah. 2008, 2012. It's been many years. Unfortunately, I don't see the family fighting as much nowadays. Um I wish they were still fighting very actively in the public eye, but they're they're not right now. And you know, I don't know his his parents. Maybe maybe they need to pass on the torch to somebody because they're getting older and it's it's getting harder. But I really think there needs to be a reexamination of this case. I think. There's some major, major issues and red flags. Like we said, the FBI looked into it, but it was under the in, the under the idea that this was a hate crime. And the FBI determined it wasn't a hate crime. Not that it wasn't a murder, just that it wasn't a hate crime. So, I mean, the, it needs to be looked at in a different under a, a different microscope in, in a different light, you know? You know, there was something that was done to the Sigma Chi house in this area because of this i don't agree with that um i know people were angry um oh, when yeah. this happened they vandalized it they did they vandalized it and sigma kai ended up having to board up their house and abandon it um i don't think that's okay i don't think that's how justice is served i don't think that helps build momentum i don't think any of that we've been shown that uh, time and time and time and time again that that riotous type behavior doesn't do anything for justice um so in a situation like this i mean take all take that in my opinion take that energy and work on getting a an amazing attorney you know because uh words go a lot further than um than anger and uh violence and, and aggressiveness you know yeah you you catch more what flies with honey more bees with honey i don't know how that saying goes i still don't know how that saying goes i tried to say it weeks ago <laughs> i still yeah. don't know but it's true um it's true that you know being aggressive in that way is not going to get you heard it's going to get people in a defensive mode you know people are going to be way more defensive and not want to hear you out and and be on be on the defense there if you are speaking respectfully like think martin luther king okay like just trying to be heard and being peaceful you're gonna get way more you know uh what is it called what uh you're gonna get a lot more ears to your yeah but i was trying to say something and i i just it just i blanked it um uh, air time you're gonna get more air time yeah yeah you'll be heard in a positive way like mm -hmm. your actual words are going to be heard people aren't going to be chattering about your actions and oh my gosh did you see they vandalized you know um that home did you see they did this like people will think you're just doing awful things to the community and not want to hear you out as yeah. opposed to like being on the news speaking and making sense yeah yeah this is what happened to the house goodbye sigma chi they tore all the letters down and they vandalized it okay you catch more flies with honey than vinegar thank you <laughs> thank you demon Dog. i really needed someone to tell me 
<clears throat> yeah. But uh, I think this is a wild, wild situation. I really do. I just, you know, also the numerology aspect of this, it being Sigma Chi and him passing away on 1122 is just really freaking weird. I got to be honest. Like, is the universe messing with us? What does the K stand for? Because those aren't Sigma Chi letters. What's the K in the triangle? I, I don't know. You don't know? I was just curious if it stood for something specific. I'm sure it does, but. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting for sure. Um, but I think you guys should check out this website and, and see how you feel about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. I don't think that they found justice here. I don't think that the parents feel like this situation is closed. And like I said in the beginning of this, I I do I do not think this has anything to do with race. Um I wasn't there. I don't know for sure, of course. Um but I I'm saying that because we've covered so many other stories that feel similar to this like um hang on the um gosh what was his name again the hudson lindow and his what who's the other one i always forget his name joseph y derrick joseph y derrick joseph y derrick so hudson lindow joseph y derrick there's also the washington side uh the multiple kids have uh, lost their lives in very strange circumstances very strange ways that have been involved with sigma chi specifically and so many of those situations there's a delay there is a lack of communication with law enforcement um there are strange circumstances around it you know you know how many people reached out to us when we put out the joseph y derrick video so many people locals people claiming they were in sigma chi and that he was dropped off there i mean so many uh hudson lindow too like i i can't even give you the exact number of people saying you know it, it was this situation and they didn't want it at the, they didn't want him at the house. So, you know, I guess Sigma Chi learned its lesson not to call the police while a body is at the house. Right. Jeez. Exactly. Yeah, it's really strange, though, when you read the autopsy, how it describes these furrows in the neck on the outside. And then it talks about the dissec dissection of the neck. And it literally says that examination of the soft tissues of the neck, including large vessels and strap muscles, reveal no abnormalities. A complete layered neck dissection demonstrates no hemorrhage in the soft tissues or musculature of the neck. The hyoid bone and the larynx are intact. These injuries having been described will not be repeated? What? Like how? How is that possible? It's not. I thought that was weird the moment I read it. It is super sad. Um, you know, his family was severely affected. Um, and maybe they thought that they would get more traction with the hate crime thing. And I can understand why they felt the way that they felt. Um, you know, I, I get it. I, I understand it. And I think that there was some off-putting behavior from the officers who they were interacting with that made them feel even more so like that. And it's a hot button political topic that's going on in the country, you know, at the time. And, you know, it, I understand it. I understand why they felt that way. However, I, I don't think that that has to be the driving force here. 
Um, it could be a, a variety of things. It could be some kind of argument or disagreement, or it, I guess it could be like a hazing situation. Now, um, his blood alcohol content at the time of his autopsy was 0.07%. So he had been drinking. Yeah. We know that. Uh, I didn't realize at the time making the video earlier that he also used nitrous oxide, um, so did whippets. I, I didn't know that uh, until I was reading that just here um, live, which is interesting. Um, very interesting. <clears throat> yeah. It's interesting for sure. The whole thing is, is uh, like I said, is crazy. I just don't understand how, and and that that's the big issue here. Is I I don't want, I don't want people to look at the situation and hear, oh, the FBI got involved and said there was nothing shady going on here. Nope, not what happened. That is not 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 what happened. The FBI specifically was looking into whether it was a racially motivated hate crime. And they found no evidence that it was a racially motivated hate crime. They did not say that they found no evidence that it was murder. Not that we saw, but I think that the full FBI report was also not given to the family. They weren't allowed to have the full thing. I mean, it says very clearly that it was a they were looking to find out if it was a racially motivated hate crime. Mm -hmm. They were not looking to see if it was murder. The hate crime makes it federal focus. So uh, otherwise, they're going to leave it to the locals there, you know? Yeah. So I do think that's important to call you know, out. They I also, don't think that it's fair to be like, oh, yeah, the FBI backed them. No, that no. is not what we've seen and or heard. No, exactly. So to make that connection is an objective. Um. It also says that the thyroid was unremarkable, which, uh, as we just read, that it can be also damaged in a hanging. Yeah. The thyroid, around the thyroid area. So. Yeah. So I'm curious what, uh, again, another story, another one with very similar ways of managing the outcome, a very long delay, not eight hours, 25% of that. Um, a, an inclusion of university law enforcement who tracked and was a part of this investigation from number one to the last step, all right? Very questionable investigation and evidence presented in this entire thing. Do you, I don't know how I feel, do you feel like these are just a bunch of dumb drunk college kids no i feel like a lot of this was very intentional um and it's it's really interesting that the family noticed there was a brand new mattress they noticed that um you know his phone had not been collected so they took it and said things had been deleted um the fraternity brothers after the fact deleted every record even his best friends deleted all of their pictures of him on their social media. I, I don't know about you guys, but if my friend passed away, I would treasure all those pictures. I would not delete all of them. Even if the family was attacking me, like as somebody who cares about that person, I'm going to reach out to the family and be there for them and talk to them, not recoil, delete all pictures of him and, and make them the enemy. Like they're hurting badly. This was their son. So yeah, that that's weird to me. That's not right. Yeah, that's not right. Yeah. It's a, it's a strange, 
strange, strange situation. I would say the only reason deleting the pictures would be required is this risk management. It's about public perception. It's about people being able to dig into your lives. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know how I feel. I know that we're just trying to share the evidence. Um but I'm curious how everybody else feels about it because there's just very strange circumstances here, you know? And and I know I keep saying that, but we keep going through this and we keep looking at these same kind of behaviors. And, you know, I did ask a question earlier because I was curious how the community um, would have looked at historical evidence right historical evidence what we're looking at with the fraternities is historical evidence um so do you feel like historical evidence is precedence and systemic corruption research if we see that an organization like sigma chi um we're seeing these same behaviors over and over and over and over and over again, right? Uh, we've got to be able to track and look for the point of decision that's creating these same outcomes over and over and over again, in my opinion. We start with step one and track it backwards. Why are we seeing similar circumstances in multiple different locations across the u.s i don't know i couldn't tell you that but it's interesting to think about how who what where or why um is it this risk management of sigma chi is that delay the fraternity reaching out to the risk management is this risk management creating the best outcome situation to try and protect the uh the the dissolve of sigma chi maybe i don't know but one thing's clear is the decisions that are being made here don't feel like they're coming from young dumb drunk college kids uh there's forethought there is planning um if any of these are true or we can find evidence of it it's not something that you're just going to make a decision on a whim and be able to come up with and and successfully uh complete it you know there's a lot going on here a yeah. lot going on here there is a lot going on um and strange you know the parents were really angry afterwards um and i've seen a few interviews that they did um but they're kind of hard to find um which is interesting that it's hard to find the interviews that the mom did there's there's like a podcast that i found that did an interview with her but it was i don't know it seemed like it was like re-recorded over I, so I want to I want to give her the opportunity to come on the show if she wants to, um, if she ever sees this, if she wants a place to lay things out and talk about it um, and have a place where it hopefully will be easy to find for people out there. Um, I don't know. I feel like we could give her a good platform. So. If she ever wants to, the invitation's there. If she wants to, you know, fight to get his case re-examined. Because I think it should be. Um, I think there's enough questions here that I doubt what the narrative that the officers that were, were selling. Yeah. That were telling. That we're yeah. seeing. Like, I, I can see and I can understand that. That the dots don't completely line up. That there's some major questions within these dots. I I, I hear you. And, and I'm seeing very similar things. Um, so, yeah. I, I agree. I, I Some major question marks here um, that I wish we could get answers to. Um, I, it, it reminds me of the Idaho 4 situation when we're looking at other 
possible suspects, right? And uh, there is a lot of situations in the Idaho 4 investigation where a lot of people felt like they were digging into um, Sigma Chi, where before Brian Koberger became the lead suspect, before Brian Koberger became the uh, target of the investigation in the Idaho 4 massacre, uh, a lot of people felt like the focus yeah. was Sigma Chi. Um, and we have gone into those details in depth, you guys, in depth. And, um, you know, if you're curious about it, I, I posted the, the playlist link a minute ago and, uh, I can do it again here. Hang on. Boom. That should be the playlist link um, to the Frat Boy 4 Chan Theory within the Idaho 4. Um, so check it out and make sure you guys hit that like button. Make sure you guys leave a comment under the uh, videos. We just ended up watching another fraternity frat boy 4chan type story and your likes and comments under the video are very 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 much appreciated ahead of time so thank you ahead of time and uh just keep doing what you guys are doing you guys are awesome you guys are incredible and we're gonna keep digging and keep digging and keep digging um so yeah yes we will um absolutely you know what's interesting did you know crime circus was stalking our live the other day what yeah he told me after he was like yeah i, I caught you know the second half of your live so okay yeah what do you say just that he caught the second half of the live. He just didn't say hi? Mm -mm. <laughs> if he did, we missed it. We don't read every comment. Is that so. the part where um is that the part where we mentioned him? <laughs> is that why he told you? Oh, I don't know. Mm. But uh, you know, shout out to Crime Circus. We've covered a few of Crime Circus's videos. And we have a new member. That is incredible. We are super stoked to have you here. Uh, new Thought Rioters. And uh, welcome, that's TJ. Awesome. Yeah. Welcome. We are excited to have you. Yes. We're about to switch over to the members only to have a little, you know, after show chat. Yeah, for anyone watching, I posted all the links. I think I posted the Discord invite. I don't know if we gave a breakdown in uh, in in this video, but Discord is just a continuation of conversation, you guys. There is all these claims out there, which is interesting. It makes me wonder why certain people are like making certain claims about Discord, <laughs> but discord is just a continuation of a chat room it's like this chat right here where we talk about cases we post evidence um and communicate with our members uh it is free and it never costs anything ever period we will never charge you to be in discord you guys um so uh you you can always block people if you don't like what certain people are saying the one rule in there is absolutely no politics so we don't allow politics in there um you know we'll give somebody a warning and then uh we will mute them for a while because we are focused on true crime in there and politics makes true crime dirty you know politics is a dirty game let's be real um but yeah Yeah, drip, 
drip drop lurkers. No, he's been in here quite a few times. Yeah, he said hi. And we go in his live streams too. We we just premieres. He doesn't live stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Premieres. It's just content creator respect. That's all. Yep. I just hadn't told you about it. And if I don't say what I'm thinking right when I think it, I'll forget. And it made me think of it. Something popped up in the chat that made me think, oh, yeah. I forgot to mention Drip Drop was uh, checking out some of the content. Because we've been covering some of the stories that he covered a while ago. Um, like doing our own research and looking into Buddy. Doing our own research looking into Brent Kopaka. Um, you know, in the Brian Koberger case. The Idaho 4 case. So... Uh, that's awesome that he was in here and, and listening. And I bet you know. that friend interview um, of Brent Kopaka's really piqued his interest because I haven't seen anybody else post that interview. I'm, um, it could be. I, I'll ask him. And it's it's fascinating. I mean, it's it's very insightful. It, it definitely is a deeper look into Brent Kopaka's mind and what he was going through um, up until his death. Uh, yeah you know from people who were actually there you know and mm -hmm. saw it so it's really really interesting yeah yeah i will definitely ask him and see if he's heard that one before because i i know truth and transparency has covered uh brent kopaka extensively oh, but yeah. i don't i don't know i haven't watched all those videos i don't have the time to watch super super long videos um so if it's been out there that's interesting you know i i didn't know that but uh but yeah i found it very 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 strange um and uh yeah but here let me let me post this information if you want to join discord join in there it's a good time it's awesome and uh here we go. You get that's you get some additional members benefits in there depending on what membership you have too, um, which is awesome. And hang on here. All right, there we go. Membership link there, you guys, if you want to come join in. And uh, you can see the members only videos where we get personal with people on that link there. And um, let me see, let me see. All right, I think I got everything there. I will post the Twitter real quick. And please, you guys, if you haven't yet, hit that like button. And as soon as this video is done, leave a comment under the video. That is our um, Twitter right there. And we appreciate you for it. We just had an incredible month. Incredible, incredible, incredible month. And it's all because of you guys. All of you guys. So... Just keep doing what you're doing. You guys are supporting Thought Riot Podcast incredibly, incredibly. And YouTube has been awesome too, like really awesome. I, I finally got YouTube to be able to support us and look into all the issues we've been having. Um, they've been looking at the drops, the the views all that good stuff so um you know it's been help that's been helpful too being able to turn off those those couple cities that that it's coming from so did you post the members link yet yep like to join? Mm hmm Oh, okay. I did. I did. I did. All right, you guys. Hit that like. Leave a comment under the video as soon as we click end here. But we are going to pop over to the 
members only stream which i will post right now hang on one second here all right there we go there we go there we go so Come join us. Come hang out with us. Hop on all of our social media. Hit that like button. Leave a comment uh, under the video. Thank you all for being here. This is the True Crime Talk Show brought to you by Thought Riot Podcast. My name's Brendan. And I'm Malia. Thank you all for being here, trying out the show, or being dedicated to the show and being here every night. Um, yes, we will see you again Sunday night. See so until you. then, have a good weekend. Bye. Later.